Hi and welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4 with me, DaZero. Alright, so let's unpause. Um, it is November 1937. We have started working on our design for an armored cavalry unit. And we're starting to work on our rifle division, but it's still really not... It's still very much a militia. And we need a lot more army experience. But it's coming. Our last batch of free army experience is going to come... Uh, very soon. There we go. Mountain infantry has been researched. That is very good news. Um, what am I going to work on next? Now, this is ahead of time, but I feel like the field hospitals are so important to me. It's so important to preserve our manpower. Oh, I could go for the Navy. Now, it's so important to... I'm going to research. It's supposed to be in 1939, but we got a bonus for it. We're going to research it ahead of time. Because... We need to preserve manpower at all costs. But, uh, yeah, all right. Uh, world tension is still at 39%. Things have exploded in Asia. We have Japan fighting China. And right now, China's holding pretty good. Uh, but Japan's going to start doing some naval invasions. And uh, things are not going to turn so well for China. If we get the chance, we're going to send guns to China. Royal Canadian Ordnance. Uh, we're gonna pick a new national focus. Uh, like I said, I am not pausing, so we need to do things in the right order. We're gonna start working right now on the conscription plebiscite. Plebiscite. Um, this is gonna let us do something about the fact that Quebec doesn't want to join the conscription. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about it after I read this. Italy announces claims on Yugoslavian territory. Speaking to the Italian population among the Dalmatian coast, Benito Mussolini has announced that Italy f fully considered Italian-speaking territory in Yugoslavia to be a rightful part of Italy. An official statement backed up the claims, making it clear that Italy is prepared to take the ter territory by force, if need be. Ugh, things are not looking good in Europe also, the tension. Ah, uh, tension's at 41%. Like I said, as soon as it, it reaches 50, we can help China. So Yugoslavia, so Italy is making some claims. They might invade, they might not invade. Um, but yeah. So yeah, so things are... How many... Oh, we have a thousand artillery units. Very good. We're going to start slowing down production. And we're going to focus on our tank production instead. Uh, we're running out of oil, but just one. That's okay. All right, we need, we need a lot of these tanks. Like, we're building one a day right now. We need to build like two or three a day. Um, we're building four planes a month. Tight tank guns. Eh, that's alright. We, we got a little bit of them stored so we can have a deficit for a little while. Uh, 6,000 guns. 300 trucks. 500 support equipment. We're going to need a lot more of that. Oh! Army experience. Yes. Alright. Armored, armored Cav is going to have our little motorized infantry. There we go. Now, we need to start building these guys. Oops. To start training our armored cab. We're going to need four units. They're going to have high priority. And we're going to deploy them in Nova Scotia somewhere. Doesn't matter. So right now, they don't have enough light tanks. Missing light tanks. Missing light tanks. Missing light tanks and trucks. Delay tactics. Very nice. We want to keep going down... These here, we're going to research mobile defense. It's going to give us a big bonus to the defensiveness of our troops. Now, our um, our riflemen are not going to be used offensively. Riflemen are going to be all about holding the line. They're going to be holding back, holding the line, making sure we can keep our supplies. And it's going to be our armored cavalry that's going to exploit holes and push forward. Because they're tanks. And they're better suited for that. Um... And by the way, we, we got some new people here. Uh, we got Irish Warrior, Chef Gib. Do you guys uh, want the um, the uh, the armored cav named after you? We'll, we'll name uh, we'll name the cavalry after the, the newcomers in in the chat. Because uh, right now, if you can see our rifles, they're all named after a subscriber. We have the first rifle Baby J, the second rifle Pillow Talk, the third rifle a Stray Game, Jack Knot, Jacket Panda V2, and everyone. I like naming things in the games I play after the people who watch me. Okay, we're also going to be... Okay, we have 15... Almost 15 army experience. Uh, we're going to start to upgrade our rifle division. Because we're training those... We're training those armored cavalry. 
the good thing is that your units can start training even though they don't have all their material they're capped to so right now because they have 80 percent of their material they can't train beyond 84 percent but it's kind of cool that way that even though we don't have all the tanks we can still train them on how to use the guns and and the other stuff so uh we really need our tank production to uh to pick up here massively 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 we have a how many deficit of tank 600 tanks oh so even if you produce two a day that's going to take a whole year to to produce these tanks well that's bad hello super jan super jan welcome welcome to historic canada we're gonna go kick ass in world war ii um so yeah, so, okay, we have 15 army experience. Our rifle division, one thing we're going to do here, we're going to add a lot of artillery. I love artillery. And we're going to keep the anti-tank. Uh, that would cost us 10, and we're going to add some mountaineers. That's going to cost us 15. Uh-oh, what's this? Adrien Arquin unites the fascists. Earlier today, the various fascist parties of Canada held a national convention in Kingston, Ontario. There it was decided to unite all of the parties into one new party led by a particularly charismatic person called Adrien Arquin. As his first action of this newly unified party, Arquin held a rally at Massé Hall to promote the party, referring himself as the Canadian Führer. Seems he seeks to emulate the Nazi party. Oh no! We get some Nazis in Canada. That is not good. So there's a bunch of nationalist fascists, actually. That have started coming in Canada. That is that is very not make me happy, but nothing we can do about it. It's not so much. It's just five percent of the population. It's not a big deal right now, at least. Um, but yeah, what was I looking at? Tank production. So the tank we're using right now is the um, what is that? Is that the Matilda? So I've installed a mod for those of you who haven't seen it yet, uh, which gives historical Canadian tank names or the tank that they used historically like the Vickers, the Matilda, uh, the Valentine, the Ram, the Grizzly and the Centaur stuff like that. So right now we're building Matildas and Matildas are, are not bad tanks. They're a good little tank. Uh, not very fast but they were very well armored. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah things like right now things are so calm and it's it's February 1938 in about a year and a half World War II is going to kick off, and as I've said, I am not pausing. The game is going to run on speed three the whole time, and I'm going to need to. I'm going to be clicking, and things are going to be popping up, and I'm going to be freaking out. But uh, right now, I'm enjoying the relative cal calm we can have. <laughs> yes, uh, Super Jan, I am actually French Canadian. I am from Quebec. Uh, usually, there's a big Quebec flag here, but since I'm playing as Canada, I put on the Canadian flag because I feel like. You know, the Anschluss of Austria. Oh no! All right. Um, uh, national focus completed. The construction place beside. We're gonna go pick another focus. My God, my screen is cluttered. And uh, we're gonna start. So we have two choices. We can either place Quebec under curfew or do a referendum. We're gonna do a referendum. We're gonna hope that Quebec comes along. If they don't, we're screwed. Like, we lose so much manpower. There's a 60% chance that they'll agree but 40 percent chance that we're screwed on manpower so that's a tough call but i'm not risking a civil war anyway a plebiscite is held the results are in every territory and province except quebec votes in large majority for the expansion of conscription rules the troublesome aspect is that not only did quebec vote no they voted nearly 73 percent against it it is very likely that things will not change in quebec in terms of conscription perhaps in light of what their peers have said they will change their mind even if just a little of course we could be more forceful instead and then the Anschluss of austria has happened uh, after a successful coup d'etat by the local Nazi party in Vienna, German troops have, have crossed the Austrian border and taken control of the country. No fighting has been reported and the German soldiers were greeted by cheering crowds in the cities. In a speech before a massive crowd at the Hedenplatz in Vienna, Hitler announced the Anschluss of Austria, annexing the country into Germany. The oldest eastern province of the German people shall be, from this point on, the newest bastion of the German Reich. So Austria has been annexed. Right here. Bye, Austria. You're now part of Germany. 
Um, sometimes they refuse, and then they can lead to war and stuff. Oh, we can modify our government. All right. What do we want next? Uh, a partial mobilization would be really good. More military production, but 1938 tank designs, ship designs. Oh, I don't know what I want to take. I think I'm going to go for a partial mobilization. Yes. That's going to help us, uh, our production air and construction of new factories and stuff. That's going to be really useful. It reduces the amount of our factories that need to go to produce toasters. Where are the toasters? Here, the toasters. Sorry. So we don't have to produce as many toasters. Our people are fine with the number of toasters they have. And we can build things faster, so it, it, it's pretty good. Irish Warrior, uh, the question of Quebec independence should not really be discussed <laughs> in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> let, let's not get into that, that political thing, because that is a hornet's nest. Uh, no matter what you say on... And I, I, I can give my honest opinion, but... No matter what you say on there, people will get angry. So let's keep people not angry. People are entitled to their opinion. And uh, yeah, I might answer that question at some point, but not right now. I'd, I'd rather not do it. <laughs> I'd rather not get very angry people after me. Um, uh, <laughs> it, is, it is a very... Uh, people still talk about this, and it's a very contentious issue. Anyway. Le, le, no, no comments. <laughs> I, I will take the, the the easy way out. Um, what do we got? We got five army experience, so we can start upgrading our riflemen with even more mountaineers. That's going to be very good for us. Now we would like to give these guys some. Um, I'm researching it right now, aren't I? What's it called? Maintenance companies, uh, which is going to basically mean our tanks are going to break down less, which means we have to build less tanks, which is good because we can't build that many how are we doing for tanks we're still missing about 500 tanks i need more tanks i need more tanks and it's it's really bad um okay we have enough trucks let's cut down on the trucks artillery oh, we have enough artillery right now but support equipment we i can't cut down on those uh now that yeah. We still need anti-tank guns, so... Ugh. I need more tanks. I need so many more tanks. We're, we're up to two a day. So in a year, we should have enough tanks. So that puts us in March 1939. We're going to be cutting it close. We're going to be cutting it really, really, really close on our production here. But I can't, I can't take production off of these other things. We're gonna need these guns. We're gonna need. Let's go check out China. How's China going? Uh, that's kind of important to know. Uh, China's holding quite well, actually. China's having a lot of trouble. That makes me quite happy. Uh, they've landed here, though. They're pushing in. That is not nice. All right, so we're building our tanks. Uh, we're still working. My God, we need. We're we're getting about 0.08 experience daily. How much experience do we need to finish the rifles? We need 15 more experience. Uh, so 0.08. So every two day we get 1.5. So two, two, we need about 200 days. In 200 days we're gonna have the rifle division that we want, uh, which is gonna be good. Yeah. We're going to be cutting it really close on getting enough equipment to get our troops out when World War II starts. Hopefully we can do well. How's our navy doing? Oh, we have six, six ships. We have the HCA, HMCS Vendetta, HMCS Voyager, HMCS Waterhen, HMCS Fraser, the HMCS St. Laurent, and the HMCS Ottawa. They're all Ottawa-class destroyers, so they're not amazing ships, but this is all we can build right now. <laughs> we just don't have the production to do anything else. 
All right, still 41% world tension. April 1938. The year is 1938. Our boys at home are training and doing push-ups. They're pointing their guns. Will we get enough tanks before the war starts? <laughs> 438. Come on. Two and a half tanks a day. I mean, we're churning those out. Like, we're churning out tanks, but it's just not enough. It's just not enough. Oh, we need more tanks. And I want ships and... Ooh. We're starting to run out of oil. Uh, it's not too, too bad. I'm gonna... I'm gonna hold off. Oh, we can actually... Maintenance company. Awesome. We can stop importing tungsten. We're not building as much artillery. Okay, we got uh, we got this. So it's 1938. What are we gonna research next? Uh, we need to start researching these guns. Because right now we have like really crappy machine guns. So and they're gonna go pretty fast. So let's let's improve our uh, infantry equipment and our machine guns. Basically everything we do from now on, there's about a year left before World War II starts, is geared towards we're going to war. And we need to be ready when the war starts. We need to have everything we can. So Iceland and Greenland should be should be mine. Um, like I said, at some point I might play a fascist Canada. I might invade the US and take over the United Kingdom. Uh, in, in Labrador and uh, Newfoundland and made my take <laughs> Greenland and, and, and Iceland but um, not today today we're historic today we're we're the nice Canada we're the Canada that's gonna help everyone and by help everyone we mean kill Nazis but um, <laughs> and maybe at some point I could play a game where uh, we play as Quebec we could like force uh, <laughs> we could force a civil war and play as Quebec I don't know how well that would go, but <laughs> with this mod, you can do that. Uh, with the, the mod is called Better Canada, by the way, if you if you want to look for it. Uh, Better Canada, it kind of rebalances Canada and it, uh, it really changes the focus tree to have a lot of historical things and lots of interesting things and gives Canada the penalty to manpower that are caused by the, the whole problem with conscription. Speaking of which, the referendum in Quebec is going to be over in about... 10 days and uh, that's gonna that's gonna really decide what happens for us if Quebec remains unconvinced we are gonna be losing so much manpower that we're gonna have to really really limit what we can do in the war the USA declare war on North Korea Again, um, one second. We have we have research. Uh, okay, we're gonna get dispersed support, not integrated support. We're going for dispersed support. Um, again, I don't really want to get political, so I, I don't really want to talk about that too much. Um, you know, I might give my opinion at some point. Uh, maybe when I take a break. When I take a break, maybe I'll give you guys all my opinion live. Uh, just, just so it's not, you know, everywhere. But, uh, yeah, let, let's talk about this during the break. How about that? Uh, at, at the next break. But uh, for now... Yes, Quebec! Yes! You... Yes! All right. First of all, let's take a new national focus. Oh, all right. Um, Allons-y, Canadiens, not yet. What we need right now is the Statute of Westminster. We need more political power. We need to start working on our political game. The population was moved to reluctantly agree to some measure of conscription. While still lower than other provinces, they should give us much more room to breed now. So instead of a 35% penalty, we're getting a 20% penalty. That is huge. That is huge. That makes, look, look at that. 40,000 more people right now ready to fight from Quebec. Quebec was convinced the war is going to be just. We're doing it for the right reason. Yes, good. That's. I'm so happy because I I've played a couple of times to kind of figure out what happened, and one time Quebec didn't accept conscription, and I just didn't have any men to do anything. But uh, no, they, they 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 saw the light. They saw that it's a just cause. 
Um, and also, you know, it might seem crazy that right now we're sort of planning. It's only 1938 and we're planning so hard for war, but historically Canada, uh, as early as 1936 actually, started planning for World War II. Uh, Mackenzie King uh, was convinced there was going to be a war in Europe and he wanted to help uh, our allies, England, uh, kind of for many reasons, a lot of reasons that it benefited us a lot uh, for trading and things like that, and also there are allies. But um, so he started really, really, really early in 1936 to reform all, all these things that we're doing. He was doing maybe differently, but Canada did um, in 1936. I think, or was it 1939? 1939. There was about three and a half thousand men in the navy, and only two years later, in 1941, there was 10,000. Uh, triple the number in two years it's pretty crazy how much Canada progressed during World War II the industrialization and all this stuff um, by the way all these little focuses uh, but in this mod have their own flavor text like if we are to properly convert our militia to a proper army we must invest in small arms production and research the, the person who did the, 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 the person who did this mod did a really good job there's lots of historic things, lots of flavor text, lots of interesting events. It's a really good mod. Um, I really like it because the uh, sort of generic nation tree that you get in Arts of Iron 4, it's kind of poor in my opinion. But with mods, and they're really easy to install the mods, you go on the Steam Workshop and you click it and then uh, it makes it a lot more fun to play those small nations. Um, speaking of which, I'll probably, I'll probably play Finland at some point. I really like Finland. Field Hospitals level 2. Very good, very good. Let's get our um, support weapons here. Better machine guns. Yes. Canada should be a, a semi-major country. I mean... I, it wasn't really. Like, the thing is that in this game, major countries go... Like, let's, let's go look at the US, right? They have... Somewhere between 150 and 177 civilian factories, 20 dockyards, and 15 military factories. We have 40, right? They have like two 250 factories. We have like a fifth of their production capacity. It just doesn't compare. Canada doesn't compare as a major country. Although, by the end of this, we're going to be fighting with the best of them. Believe me, when I'm done with Canada, we're going to be up there fighting toe to toe with the Germans and we're going to be kicking their asses. But I'm going to take a short break. I'm going to be back soon. Thanks all for watching. Power surge detected already? We just we just took care of that. <laughs> We just took care of that! I think they've abandoned me. I think the entire village has ran away. They, they thought I'm like a terrible, terrible, terrible person. Okay. So we need to angle this thing, propel it, and release it at the right time. So... Ang angle the thing, angle the thing, and then we go... Oh. 